What's up, everybody? Welcome back to The Reporter Show. As always, I got my co-host with me. I got Deb on my left. I got Tuck on my right. This week was a little... I, I would say it was a pretty good week. Would you say it was a pretty good Let's week of sports? Let's move. Say we won more than we lost. Yeah. So, I mean, we've had worse weeks for yeah. sure. Okay. So, they said we had a pretty good week of sports, so I'm going to say we had a pretty good week I'll, of sports. I'm going to say it's a good week of sports. I know we've we been giving props to football, but because of football, it, this... They, they, they started, you know what I'm saying? They, We're going to get to them. They, and yeah, I'm going to talk about they, that they, they, yeah. I, I, I need y'all to. All right. <laughs> so, football had a matchup against Nelson, uh, formerly Sagu. Um, this game was honestly in our control from the very beginning, which this season, uh, I won't say it's out of the ordinary, but normally we're like, we come out in that second half and then we start kicking in. You know what I'm saying? Get, it get, takes some get time to get some things yeah. going. But for most of this game, we were in control. Uh, we kept them from moving the ball in the air in the first half. They only had 38 yards passing total in the first Ooh, half, uh, which is un, an unusual positive for us mm -hmm. with, you know, our history with, of with, the secondary. The secondary yeah. um, but I don't think Nelson is a passing team to begin with. Uh, they still only had 143 total offensive yards in the first half, though. So that's still big for the mm -hmm. defense. Um, we controlled the first half in, in terms of uh, time of possession, uh, about 18 minutes, give or take. So, yeah. we, yeah, we was handling the ball for most, for most of the first half. Uh, but we didn't have a lot to show for it. We only went into the half up one score, 14-7. Mm -hmm. um, second half wasn't much different. Uh, our defense kept them from moving the ball offensively, whether it was passing or rushing. Uh, we kept them scoreless for three quarters. So, big ups to the defense, of course. Big ups to the defense. Shout out to y'all boys. Uh, we had three sacks on the day, two interceptions on the day, and seven tackles for loss. Uh, as a team, that's a really great defensive performance. Uh, Nelson only finished up with 235 total offensive yards. And we, I believe, had 250 pass, just 250 passing yards. So. Just with our passing yards, we already yeah. was thumping them. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so, offensively, let's talk about the offensive side of things. We had a different look. Uh, they showed a shotgun two-back offense. So, they had DJ and Red both in at the same time, which was a little bit different. Um, but I think uh, there was some some reasons for that because I know that now that everybody knows that DJ is coming out of the backfield for a pass, you got to have another distraction at this mm -hmm, point true. because if they see him in the backfield coming out, they're like, okay, it, you better stop, buddy, right and here. And if you're showing both your weapons, yeah, like you got to pick, pick, pick your poison. Yeah, pick yeah. your poison. They exactly. Don't know what to do at that point. So exactly. that was a different look for us. Um, still, DJ was coming, slipping out of the backfield, get over the middle successfully as usual. Had a couple of big passes over the middle from Davian to DJ, uh, just as usual. We took a lot of shots downfield, a lot of deep balls, um, and we connected on a few of them, and still had a steady attack on the ground as well. Like I said, we had 250 passing yards and 172 rushing yards. So we we're moving the ball on the ground and in the air. Uh, honestly, though, if you just look at these stats, you would think this was a bit more of a blowout. True. And I feel like it should have been, mm -hmm. which is why I said let's talk about that. Because we won this game 27-7. I'm not going to take nothing away from that. That's a great win. Mm -hmm. But I feel like this should have been like 42-7. to seven or You know, there were so many True. opportunities where we were driving down the field, and, we, and then we didn't, we didn't capitalize. Didn't finish the play. Yeah. Like, didn't finish the drive, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, Talk to me about what y'all saw from this game because to me it looked as if though this should have been a little bit more than what it was, even though it was a yeah, good win. For sure. I mean, I mean for, go first ahead. and foremost, for, for a team that beat us last year at home in a bad, ugly fashion, the one that we probably should have won, um, you got to give them props for going out Absolutely. there and thumping them yeah. on their home field. So uh, shout out to them for that. But yeah, just looking at the stats, I mean, we beat them in essentially every every, every category. Yeah. I mean, first downs, rushing yards, passing. I mean, they had 82 passing yards on the whole yeah. the whole day. So, I mean, it's and especially time of possession. That's the one that sticks out to me. We had 37 to their 22 minutes, and that yes. that tells a team that you dominated them yes. completely. I mean, you had you win the time of possession. That means you dominated the game. Uh, Before I let you go on that, I think the biggest thing is uh, Nelson likes to run a a uh, no huddle offense. Oh, okay. So, so it is a little yeah, bit harder to hold yeah. on to it time possession true. wise. But like you said though, we did control that part that's of the true. game. That's true. And the thing about us is if you can run the ball, you can control the whole game. Mm -hmm. And that seems to be the difference between us and them because they're in a hurry up. We're taking our time. So if they don't score in those quick possessions, it's we over. get it right back and take our time yeah. and score again. So 
I mean, just looking at the pure stats, you would think that it was more of a blowout than 27 to 7. But I did hear that towards the end of the game, they started throwing a couple of flags and kind of just, the game got a little down. bit ugly. Yeah, they slowed it down yeah. a little bit. But um, I don't know, man. Offense, you put up 27 points, that's a lot. But you look at the stats, it's like, man, we, you would have, you would have expected us yeah, to win by a lot more, more than what yeah. we did. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'll go ahead and kind of second what you said. When, when you run the ball the way that you do, I mean, I believe we have two out of the top five mm -hmm. running backs. Yep. And uh, I think that's very dominant to have, and especially having Davian, you know what I'm saying, out there orchestrating the offense. Like, I mean, you, 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 you can't stop that. Yeah. I, I really don't see how you, how you can uh, – how you can stop that offense. We look great out there, as you mentioned, defense, handling business, uh, keeping them to only seven points. Yeah. That's when you win a football game almost any week. True. Almost any week. So huge props to the defense. Um, but yeah, I mean, st stats wise, we should have been up. Yeah. Stats -wise, we, we, to we me, it looks because last week we, we oh. kind of got on the defense a little bit because they had some good individual games, but as yeah. a team, as obviously, a team, they gave yeah. up way too many points. Yeah. I think translate that from to this week. It seems like, I mean, we still had two interceptions, uh, seven TFLs, yeah. but this is probably the most complete game I've seen us Absolutely. play uh, since I've been at Whalen, to be honest Absolutely. with you. Because, I mean, we've had some blowouts to North America and sorry teams like that, but this yeah. is, I mean, Sagu is a, respected, is, a respected team in the conference in every yes. sport, so this is a complete game for us. And I, I'll go ahead and say this, too. Like, in, in, the, in the past few games, ones that we've lost, they haven't been ugly losses either. Like, you you no. see where, no, where everything is slowly falling into play so, yeah. and this team has been coming together week after week game yeah. after game and I think it, it's a beautiful thing to see on top of that this is our, our third one of the year yeah. I think that beats the past two years it does. that, that yeah. we've you know had that I'm we've had I think that's really huge because huge. even though it doesn't seem like that big of a deal you have to think about it for the team morale in the past three to five years for you to only get two to three wins a year and two I believe in the past three years was the most mm -hmm to come this year and get three in already, the first half of the season. Already, yeah. Sure. You know what I'm saying? You, yeah. You're not even, actually, they're not even at the half, well, how many games they play in the regular season? 10? 10, 10. So they're at the halfway so, point, yeah. and they already yeah. got yeah. more than yeah. what they normally have. Sure. So that's, a, that's a, a big win in itself. Now, what I will say is Nelson did not have, they don't look like a passing team. Their quarterback is a run-first type of guy. Mm -hmm. uh, he looked to run the ball a lot. Um, and so what I will say is, even though we stopped them, I do want to see this happen against a team that has a passing game. True. You the, get what I'm saying? Yeah, that's that's kind of yes. yes. I need sure. I need to see it because, yes, it's good that we can stop the run. I knew that we could stop the run. So if you have a run-first quarterback, you're probably still going to exactly. stop that. Yeah, I want your point. I want to see you stop the deep ball. Mm -hmm. I want to see you stop – a team where they live off of passing. You get what I'm saying? Because if they live off of passing and you can still stop them, okay, at that point, now we're dangerous. And shut them down time yes, after time. Yes, exactly. I mean, because like, as we saw in, in previous weeks, you know, we, we'd have big plays, big interceptions from our DBs time to time. But overall, throughout the game, yeah. we let up. Yeah. We, we, we allowed too many passing yards, too many deep balls and stuff like that. So, yeah, the, in, the individual stats, you know what I'm saying, a, a pick or two looks good on the stat sheet by all means. But realistically, how much did you give up? Yeah. You know what I mean? And so we need to, like, like you said, we need to see how well this defense comes together as a whole against a passing a threat passing team. team. So, yeah. But I do want to say this. Um, as you mentioned, the morale of the team looks amazing. And I want to yeah. give credit to the coaching staff as, as well for completely flipping the script mm -hmm. with this, this team. True. And the players, everybody being on board, everybody being there to support each other yeah. and, and truly go out there and work for, for better for themselves and this team as well. I agree. And the last thing I'm going to say on it is I do want to shed some light on just the returners who've been here since just mm -hmm. the the days when we were when nobody Straight. took Waylon serious, like uh, guys like Ponder, DJ, Red, um, sure. Ryan. Yeah Davian, yeah, Davian as well. It's like, man, we've had guys who have been here the past two or three years and have seen the worst of years, but they stuck it out with uh, Coach Hinojosa, uh, believed in what he had to say, and now they're starting to reap the benefits of it. And then I think next year we're even going to take a bigger step. Yeah. And I hate that some of these guys are going to graduate, mm -hmm. might not get to see 
the the height of where we can go, but they can say they were a part of the, the, the step in the right yeah. direction. They, they laid the exactly. foundation, laid yeah. that first So break those guys it, do need to get their see. props for sure. Yeah, I think uh, Brian Wood, the the new offensive coordinator that they brought in, has has brought a completely different look to the offensive side of things. There's there's different things in their game within every game, and so he's he's clearly uh, a big brain out there on the side and he's helping us succeed in ways that we haven't seen this team succeed in a long time. Some stats from this one was Davian, who was 16 for 24, had 250 yards passing and had one rushing TD. Uh, DJ, of course, again, had uh, 20 attempts rushing, rushed for 90 yards, one TD, and added four reception and 64 yards receiving. And Josiah had seven receptions with 104 yards receiving. Uh, I would love to keep talking about football, but we got to move this one on to volleyball. Uh, volleyball had three matchups this week, uh, so a lot of work for them this week. Um, still dealing with a lot of injuries, so you'll see that in these upcoming games that I'm about to talk about. Uh, the midweek matchup that they had, a non-conference matchup against Southwest, they won this one three sets to nothing. This was honestly a team that we should have destroyed, and we did, so I'm glad that they handled them. It was one of those games where you just want to see everybody play. You know, you get in people that don't normally play. You get them some time, some experience on the court. Yeah, exactly. So it was one of those days. Um, and so I'm not going to get too much into this game. We ended up, like I said, we won this set. Uh, we won this matchup, three sets of none. Uh, some stat leaders from this one was Carly. She had 10 kills with a 474 hitting percentage and added two aces. Uh, Gabriel had four blocks. Emmy had 31 assists and added two blocks. And Aubrey had nine digs. Now, uh, going into this matchup against Langston, uh, it's really not much different than a Southwest. I think every matchup that we had was like a Southwest. Uh, every matchup that we had, I think all of those teams only had one or two wins. We should have brought out the broom. Yeah, and every single one, right? Single one. But as you'll see, we did not bring out the brooms against this one. Uh, Langston, in set one, we played down to the level of our competition. I'm not going to lie to you. Not even getting more kills than we had errors. So, of course, that means we had a negative hitting percentage, yeah. which is terrible. Uh, we were getting handled at the net, had plenty of miscommunication on defensive plays, uh, and we were still dealing with setter and hitter timing. Uh, set two and set three, we won both of those 25 to 13. But if you, note, if you watch these games, you'll notice that in set two, it was a completely different win than set three. Set two was still some rough play. Um, we did switch out setters. Uh, but it was still a little shaky. Uh, set three, though, we finally looked like we should have been. We had 15 kills, only had three errors, and uh, our hitting percentage was exceptional, uh, 444. So 444 hitting percentage is great. Uh, from that point, I'm thinking, okay, let's close this out next set and go ahead and get this over with. Yeah. We shouldn't even drop yeah, the first one, first one, right? Uh, went into set four, and we went back to shaky play. Had 10 errors, much like that first set, and found ourselves dropping this set 26-24. So now we're in the Ooh, fifth man. set with Langston. Which we wish we never which is terrible. been in the first place. You know what I'm never. saying? Fifth set with Langston. What are we doing? That, that should be unheard of. Yeah. yeah. Realistically. Them yeah. words never come out of our uh, like, ne Never. Like, and never. so. past three. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. And so, honestly, this was another ugly one, honestly. Between the miscommunication, the timing, and, and whatever else, we had seven errors in this fifth set. And we had a really slow start to this one as well. So it worried me at first. Um, but we still found a way to win this one 15 to 10. Now, what I will say we only had one set in this entire match where we had a hitting percentage above 100. And if you don't know volleyball, that's pretty bad. <laughs> that's actually very bad. I think, I think uh, there was one set where we had um, 0 0.042. I think it was two sets like that. Another one with 0 0.049, another one with 0 0.094, something. All these really significantly low hitting percentages. And it was terrible. Um, I don't know what we got going on, but... What I will say is, out of the 20 games that Langston has played, they only have two wins and have only taken two teams to five sets, with, one, with us being one of them. So this was a very hideous win. Yeah, that's bad. And look, this that's, win did not bad, make me feel good look, at all. Look for us. Horrible, yeah, horrible, horrible. and it didn't make me feel good at all. Um, what I'll say, though, and I'll let y'all talk about this, is actually I'm going to wait till we get to Central Christian to talk about that. Uh, some stat leaders from this one was Claudia. She had 12 kills with a 455 hitting percentage, so she showed out. A uh, great individual performance. She added seven blocks to this as well. Jordan had 30 assists, and Emily had 10 digs. Um, I'm going to talk about Central Christian, and then we're going to talk about them as a whole. All right. So uh, Central Christian, another matchup where we should sweep, and we did. We won this one three sets to nothing. Uh, and set one, we won 27 to 25, so a tough set uh, that I did not expect to happen. Uh, another neck-and-neck -neck match with a team that shouldn't be competing with us in the first place. Uh, once again, committed a lot of errors. We had seven of them. In set two, we won this one 25 to 19. It was not a lot of kills in this one, but you don't have to do too much when the team you're playing can't get the ball over the net <laughs> successfully. Uh, they committed nine errors. That led to a lot of free points for us. In set three, we won this one 25 to 17. 
Same situation. Central was just terrible play. We had a perfect uh, set with no errors and showed up big at the net with five blocks in this one set. Um, some stat leaders from this one was Selma. She had 10 kills with a 409 hitter percentage and led Diggs as well with eight. And then Fade had seven blocks and she added seven kills with a 417 hitter percentage. And Valentina had 22 assists and added two aces. Uh, between these last three matches, I have seen a two libero look, which is new to yeah. the game. Yeah. Normally, it's just one libero. Now, you can have two liberos. I don't know why we would utilize that, but that's what we're doing now. We got two liberos. Uh, and then we have had three different setters used in each three games, one heavily used in every single match. To me, I think this is too much going on. Mm -hmm. And I think it's causing a lot of problems on the offensive side of things. Like that, yeah. So, y'all go ahead and tell me what y'all seeing. Um, I mean, first off on the Langston one, um, if you know anything about Langston, you know going there is not going to be an easy task regardless of how good they are at any sport it is. Um, their students really do show out for the school. Yep. Uh, they show up. Uh, they're loud. Um, so they have a lot of school spirit there. So I didn't, I mean, I expected us to win easily, granted. but. It doesn't shock me that that's a game that slipped out of our hands for a second and that we went to five sets. I still think we obviously never should have went to five sets, but, you know, if you let a team get some energy, especially with, with a crowd behind them, anything can happen. Um, so I'm glad we finally took care of business, but like I said, it never should have went to that. Um, Central Christian seems like they obviously dominated. Central Christian is the worst team in the conference, I believe, so we did what we were supposed to do. Um, but yeah, it seems like Yakamazi has been switching up the rotation a little bit. And while it does seem a little bit unorthodox, mm -hmm. we do have a lot of wins to show for it. Um, but then, granted, we have a USAO loss, which we probably shouldn't have had to yeah. show for it as well. So and some rough wins, you know. Yeah, I mean, we haven't had just a great game yeah. with it. But I mean, you can't complain about what we're probably four and one, three and one with it. I bet uh, since yeah. he started switching up the rotation. So, I mean, it's like the win loss record shows it makes it look good yeah. but when you're watching the games don't it don't look too good yeah, it no, don't look it too doesn't. good so um, I'm sure he knows more about it than obviously yeah, than me or you do but I do see I understand what you're saying it's we are kind of going uh, changing our ways in the way we uh, substitute and rotate now yeah. uh, I mean go back to that Langston game I think like you said it was, it was very very ugly mm. very ugly performance but at the end of the day we did come out with the win I just think that like going forward, you can't have that, especially like you yeah. said against a team like that, against a team like that that has that energy that can bring that energy. Yeah. We lose to a team like that. It's terrible. Yeah, that can. It's terrible. That can screw up the it's, season. It's horrible. It yeah. it could mess up everything for us going forward. Um, and then Central Christian as well. Like, yeah, we we brought the broom in that one and and handled business. But I feel like our performance in the in all three of the games that we had this past week were very ugly. And going forward, we need to lock in. Yeah. Get our minds right, and and go out and perform because going forward, this this type of performance will not work against better teams. It's not going to at and, all. And I think the biggest thing is, I hate getting ugly wins against bad teams because you don't always feel the same. Mm -mm. It's like your credibility. Yeah, your pride, you know what I'm saying. Everything. Because my thing is though, if you lose that game, you really you, you know, really you know. feel it. You know what I'm saying? You got to wake up. But when you win that game, you think, oh, okay, we, we yeah, still won. Think, oh, we still we won. Just turn it on at any yeah, yeah. no, anybody. you can't. Yeah, you can't do because that. this week we still that. have we still have some really weak matchups. We got OPSU. We got Southwestern Christian. The the toughest matchup we might have is probably Oklahoma City. But then next week, the week following yes, that, we got win. Texas Wesleyan, Wesleyan yep. and Nelson, yeah. the top two teams in the conference who have very very good wins and a very very good. Uh, record as well, and then you got College of the Ozarks, who we already lost, who we already who lost, we already lost, lost to, so in a matchup where we shouldn't have lost to begin with. Exactly. So with that being said, we really have to lock in, we do. get we our do. stuff together. And I mean, it's like you said, the, with the rotation being mixed up, maybe it is a chemistry thing, maybe it's a communication thing, whatever the case may be. Like you said, uh, you know, Yakamazi knows more, knows more, no, knows more than we do. So there, yeah. there, there probably is. So, some reason yeah, behind it, yeah, I agree. but from the outside perspective, it does it look a little wrong. chaotic. It, it looks it looks chaotic. Yeah. The wins, the stats are showing that. Yeah. And so, I, if it whether it's a coaching thing or a player thing, we have to genuinely lock in before mm -hmm. we get in these these uh these, okay. these bigger these games if we want great things for this team. Because my thing is, we're in the top. We're where we need to be. True. I ain't gonna lie. It it wasn't a a beautiful week, but we're third in the conference, which is 
we took a step up. Yeah, we you know, we they, they they didn't expect us to be at this point no. at this point in the season. Mm -hmm. We're we're in the last half of the season and we find ourselves in third place and I believe at the preseason rankings they had us at sixth or seventh in with, the conference. With that being said though, I mean, yeah, sure they had us ranked at mm -hmm. sixth or seventh, but personally, I don't oh, well, think we no, were. Of course, yeah. Like like that's why on paper, yeah. on the rankings and stuff like that, it might look great. Yes, we're in third. Yes, we've accomplished this and this. Yeah. From our perspective, our expectations for this team, those wins are unacceptable. Yeah. We have to lock in. Yeah, we do. True. Uh, let's take this one on to men's soccer, y'all. Uh, men's soccer had a matchup against Oklahoma City, um, who is receiving votes. They're not ranked, but when I tell you this, you'll wonder why they're not ranked. Uh, they're an undefeated team. 8-0-2, oh, two, so two ties, with one of those ties coming against the fifth-ranked team in the NAIA, so a very formidable opponent. This ain't a team that you can play around with. This is honestly much like a MACU at this point in the season. If you 8-0-2, oh, yeah. <laughs> you, <legit. laughs> you pretty legit. I'm going to keep it a bug. It don't matter. Um, but let's go ahead and check out some of these highlights, man. Um, first, we led off early with the early attack. Uh, we had a one-on-one -on -one look. We couldn't capitalize on it. Um, and then, of course, we came back again, had a header off the post. So we were attacking continuously on the offensive side of things. It was looking really good for us. But a rough clear from the goalie led to a really good look for them as well. But they also hit one off of the post. But then, of course, we came back here. They came back later on and ended up scoring the first goal. And so they struck first. But we came back another one-on-one -on -one again. And we ended up scoring. So Jamal had two one-on-one -on -one and finally won that one. And then they came back here. And eventually, at this point in the game, it was 1-1. Alex locked in. Save after save after save. He was completely, uh, honestly, I'm going to call him the hero of this game. He had great saves at the line. If he was standing at the line, he was getting great saves. And if he had to come out and come attack somebody up top to get to the ball before they did, he was doing that as well. At the very end, we had a really good look here from Rashawn that could have won us the game. And then they called a questionable foul on uh, Francis that I honestly didn't think it was a foul. But anywho, besides all of that, um, offensively, we looked like we should have been in this game, which I was really happy to see. In that first half, we won the shots on goal category five to four. Second half was a tad bit different. Oklahoma City took more shots this half. And honestly, as you can see in the highlights, they took some quality shots. And Alex just happened to step up yeah. big time because these were not easy saves. Um, I feel like, like as we previously mentioned, his number was called. Mm -hmm. He definitely stepped up. Uh, great job of being confident in his abilities um, and, and just making plays for this team. Absolutely. Making plays for this team and, and, like, as you said, being the hero of this game and, and saving the day. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you can't, you can't ask for better play from a goalie on that one. I mean, if y'all, I mean, like I said, if you watched those highlights right there mm -hmm. and you saw the saves that Buddy had, it wasn't like he was just standing there and catching <laughs> the ball. Yeah, no. Buddy was throwing his body yeah, left and right. He was coming out, of the, coming out of the box trying to get to the ball before they did. I mean, he was having a phenomenal game at that position. And it was really big for us because a tie in this situation looks really good. I agree. I it agree. ain't a win, but it looks yeah, really good. True. It, like you said, if they're a team with, of Mac U's caliber, yes. then tie, they yeah, must that definitely. Tie really looks good. Of course you prefer the win. Of course yeah. you prefer the win. And I think, as you said, we had great opportunities, mm -hmm. great shots on goal, a great performance by the offense. Yeah. And uh, just couldn't, couldn't finish it off. but. Great yeah. dominant performance. Defensively, I will say, uh, well, overall in the shots and goal category, even though Oklahoma City came out on attack in that second half, honestly, we still only lost that shots and goal category by one. It was six to seven. So that was really good for us. Um, on the defensive side of things, uh, what I want to I want to give a shout out to Elliot Idahan. Uh, defensively, you can't really see stats yeah. in soccer. You're not going to see it. Um, so unless you're watching the game, you can't tell that okay, this dude is showing out defensively. But I want to say that because um, he's a big part of helping this defense stay, uh, I guess, stay locked down in a sense where they're keeping that ball out from our side of the field. So I want to give a shout out to you, Elliot. You're doing big things out there on the defensive side of things. I know the stats don't always show it, but I see you, my boy. Um, we're going to take this one on to women's soccer. Women's soccer also had a matchup against Oklahoma City. 
Um, this one started out promising again with us scoring the first goal that came off the foot of Camila Zavala a little over halfway through that first half. Uh, but other than that, the rest of the game was as usual. Oklahoma City <laughs> was continuously on the attack, man. Um, this looked like what most of our season has looked like. Uh, they had opportunity after opportunity. They ended up taking 11 shots on goal and scored three. So we lost this one three to one. Um, I'll say not much. Yeah. I mean, it is what it is. It's, 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 it's been what it's been. It's, it's, it's honestly one of those years. That's, that's what it's Don't even, like. like, I'm not even going to sugarcoat it. It's a down year. Let's be real. It's a down year. We don't have who we need. Um, we're not performing the way that we need to perform. And so we just need to recoup. We need to recoup next year. We got to come back with a little bit something different. Um, I know the season isn't over yet, but at this point in the season, um, pride. yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. It's like how much? Pride. How many times can we say it? We're yeah. not, we're not the aggressor. Yeah. Um, we're averaging like one to two shots on goal a game. I mean, we're not gonna win that way. Yeah. Um, I'm sure it's something that they're probably hearing from the coach. Yeah. I, I hope they're yeah. hearing it from the coach. I'm pretty sure. um, if not, that might be the issue. Yeah. But you know, it's just like, man, what else are we gonna say? We, the only thing we can do is still show up to the game, still hope that they can make a run at the sack tournament. But man, it's like, how many times are we gonna say it? they're they're just not they're just not good right now? They're not good. Yeah, but something has to drastically change for us to have a chance at making a run mm -hmm. this year. But yeah, it's almost time to chalk it up. Yeah. I don't want to say it is yet because I'm a I'm gonna be a glass half full guy you can. but I mean it's just like <laughs> I mean yeah we're, we're just we're just not good right yeah. now they're not yeah um so that is what it is for the uh, for women's soccer we're gonna take this one on to the next subject uh, we got cross country um they were at the third New Mexico Junior College Invitational um this time around uh for the women's 5k out of 57 contestants uh, we only had one girl placed in the top 15 and that was Immaculata uh, who placed 13th with a time of 19.48. Uh, the men's 8K out of 56 contestants, we only had one guy placed in the top 10, and that was Evans Pololit, uh with a ninth place finish with a time of 25.06. Now, we did have a lot of guys finish just out of that top 15, so our team did place second overall out of five mm -hmm. teams. So still doing uh, good things in cross country. Now, let's talk about these upcoming games, man. Uh, Tuesday, men's and women's golf here, WBU Invitational. So the golf course is right over there by the Y. So, I mean, it's not a lot of times where we get to go support yeah, the golf team. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, we, you know what I'm saying? And they good. And they good. Yeah, 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 you know what I'm saying? Watch. So if y'all want to learn how to play some golf, you know, I know y'all like to go to the golf course and, 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 and blow it up because y'all can't shoot. <laughs> uh, but if y'all want to go watch some good golf, you know what I'm saying, go on out there and check them boys out. They're going to be out there today. Uh, not Oh, yeah, actually today and tomorrow. Um, but, of course, by the time they see this, y'all probably going to know that they're going to be out there tomorrow. So please go check them out, so, man. Go, go, go learn. Go learn. <laughs> <laughs> go, 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 uh, go. Soccer um, tomorrow as well. Versus USAO, women at 5, men at 7.30. Um, and then volleyball also has a home matchup against OPSU. Can you check that time for me? I don't have it down here. Um, volleyball, I believe, starts at 7. Let me check I, I would quick. assume. I, I think um, it is 7. That being said, after the volleyball game, don't go nowhere. Keep your popcorn, <laughs> stay in your seats. Hutch hysteria going on. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So do, I mean, I ain't going to have a time. Ball, yeah. But it's happening right after the volleyball game. Yeah. So, uh, Y'all want to come, you know what I'm saying, come support the men's and women's basketball team. Absolutely. It's going to be a dunk contest, three-point okay. contest. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Good music, good vibes. So cool. it'll be a good little introduction to the season. Uh, Y'all go. Y'all might as well stick around for the Hutchins Absolutely. Therapy. So, yeah, I got a lot of things to do this week, on. man. And then Friday, women's basketball will be away at West Texas. I believe this is just a scrimmage, though. Uh, and then volleyball will be here at home against Southwestern at 7. And then on Saturday, volleyball has another home matchup against Oklahoma City at 1. And then soccer is away at OPSU. So we got some things this week. I expect a lot of wins because we're not playing a lot of great teams. So if y'all don't come back with a lot of wins, <laughs> I'm going to be upset. Uh, football has a bye week this week, so we're not going to be having much for football next week. Um, but that's all we got for y'all this week, man. Uh, I think this week our player of the week certified has got to be Alex. Mm -hmm. uh, big dog, big yeah. time things, big time plays, uh, not easy saves, and kept us tied with a very, very big opponent. I agree. I agree. Um, I agree to an extent, though. <laughs> okay. You, I got, think, you got 30 I, seconds. Yeah, I got 10 seconds. Right, all right. Honestly. All right. Alex, you deserve all the credit in the world, uh -huh. but it ended in a tie. It did. Josiah, 100 receiving yards per usual. I get it. It ended a big win. It did. So that's going to be my vote, but I understand why you yeah. vote Alex. That's I mean, no sure. diss to Alex. For sure. That's all we got for y'all this week, man. We'll see y'all same time next week. Perfect. Perfect.